All right, everyone. It's time to do the third unboxing, the Soul Cage, the Hellscape. Here we go. All right, here we go. First box. We've got some more of the fire pieces. Dry tip spear, I believe is what this was called. Very nice. these in the last video as well. I'll go ahead and show them again. This, I was super excited for this. It actually has a little hole in the middle. I'm guessing so the light can stream out. I don't know if you can see that in there. Sorry, I'm so bad at this, guys. It's all for the love of the game. Okay, so this is weird. Um, this guy came right out of the box without his stick. The other guy has one, so that's bizarre. I guess I'll have to just suck it up or find something to fix it myself because I'm not sending it back for something so small. I'm super excited to use this puppy. So moving on. Spouted floors. And this will actually have some of the lava in it. Ooh. That looks so good. I don't know if it's even showing up, but it's even got like little darkened spots here on the sides. It does have magnets. so good. I'm so glad I didn't get this unpainted. <sighs> the next video I will try to whip out some of my pieces so that you guys can see them all together. Um, I was going to do a video um, of the Ender um, toys, the 3D printed dungeon tiles. I didn't though because I ended up giving them to a friend of mine because I just wasn't using them. Not when I have such great Dwarven Forge. But what I might do is have him come over and we can lay all of our tiles out together and that way you guys can see what they look like all together. I did prime and paint some of them before I gave them to him, but the rest are still unpainted. They are that shiny white plastic. 
But anyways, back to the unboxing of the Dwarven Forge. Got some more of the Jumpy Stones. Which I really like these. It looks like some more of the ledge pieces. The trifecta train. All of the encounters, this one is the one I was the most excited for. I mean, in all actuality, it's probably the least versatile, but it is the coolest. still trying to finish up our Horde of the Dragon Queen on Saturdays, and I'm also running on Sundays the um, Curse of Strahd, and then on Wednesdays I play as a player um, uh, Princess of the Apocalypse. One of these videos I will probably show you guys my crafting room where I keep all this stuff and how I store it all. details are just so cool. And that's what I said in one of my previous videos was buying the 3D printed gaming tiles is much more affordable. <laughs> but once you go to Warren Forge, I don't think you'll ever go back. quality. It's so pretty. And it's, just, it's fun to play with. Forgetting about gaming with it. It's, it's cool to just set up scenarios and set things up and look at it and see how it all plays together. I feel like a 10 year old kid playing with my toys. It's great. I love it. And it's one of those things where it's do you set up the terrain and then think of a scenario around the terrain or do you think of a scenario and then set up your terrain around the scenario oh. i get two this time yeah. oh yes okay this is something I was super excited for. So I only got one of the resin pieces just because the price was getting crazy and it seemed like the other one, now that I look at it, it's really cool, but it seemed like it was very similar to what I was already getting with this. Wow, that's nice. And as I said before, I'm not a huge fan of resin just because it is so breakable.
something I've mentioned before, but I think I'll mention again, is I work full time. I have a husband and I have three kids and one of my kids is special needs. So not only do I not have a whole lot of time to dedicate towards, um, you know, prepping for my hobby or painting for my hobby, but that's another reason why I don't enjoy resin because I have a toddler and a special needs kiddo and so I don't really want to invest a lot of money in something that could very easily end up broken. You guys have seen my kids running around through some of my videos. Most people who are in this hobby understand what it's like to have a family and try to make commitments with your family and your job and still have time for your friends afterwards. It's tough. It's a balancing act. just enough to try and make that a tough jump. Beautiful lava waterfall. I'm super excited about their new Kickstarter, The Wild Lands. I will probably go pretty heavily in on that one too. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what they have to offer and what my pocketbook looks like come that time. I do not game from my house. I game at other people's houses or online. So a lot of the times I have to be able to take this stuff with me and that can be really hard if you don't have things that are magnetized and organized. So I like to be able to have things set up ahead of time and then being able to just swoop it in and not have to worry about it because my pieces are magnetized. Alright, got the rising walls. I have these in the Caverns D, and they're actually more useful than you would probably think. Because just sometimes when you're putting these pieces together, things have a way sometimes of repeating. And so just having these extra pieces to break things up can really make a difference. So you can rise up into a point. You can swoop away from each other. Or however you want to break it up with walls in between. So 
this looks like it's a duplicate of a lot of the stalactites, or stalagmites, excuse me. Right, you can with a negative space build, you could probably have somebody crawling through a dungeon or a cavern and have a spot where things fall away or they fall through and they end up in a lava field. Do you homebrew a lot of your modules, or do you stick pretty close to the module, or do you homebrew everything? I had originally thought that some of these were going to be curves, but I, I guess that is not the case. They're just going to stick with straight lava. Maybe that was a cost issue. I tend to take modules and then change them all up. I think that's what a lot of people who are strapped for time tend to do. I mean, any module that you take, you're going to have to adjust it. But I think I do more of that adjusting than probably more people do. But I also am pretty good at Robbing. So I adjust a lot of things on the fly as well. conversations pop up sometimes about um, people paying people to do Dungeon Master for them or um, in the case of um, like the Platinum Edition from Beetle and Grimm's um, some of their box sets I've heard of people chipping in to pay for the cost of some of that stuff because it is it's an experience um, I swallowed those costs because I wanted to have this stuff regardless of who I was playing with. Um, but both my husband and I have good secure jobs and um, I have the excess income to do this to a certain degree and it's my hobby. Whereas a lot of people, some people, may not have that ability. And so I can see why they would ask someone to help offset the costs or you know, kick in some. I just, I have never, never done it. I, I, I would never do it. Um, Unless I am, you know, playing at some sort of a convention or something like that, where there's some sort of other compensation for your time. But who knows, as popularity for this grows, that, that may change. Um, I am not of the mindset that all Dungeon Masters are created equal. 
some are better than others. Some people just have that talent. showed a lot of these pieces in my other unboxing. Um, a lot of them do have the magnetic pieces on the bottom. I may not have showed that, but they do. And here are the little pieces for the trifecta terrain. I am a huge fan of the trifecta train. It is so versatile. It can be used in so many ways. It's just really, really impressive. Whoever came up with that idea was amazing. <laughs> Tupperware at the end of the night and not worry about it being broken when I get home. Not like my minis where I have to be very careful. And so my video cut out in the last two boxes. So you didn't really miss anything in the first box that I was in the middle of opening, but I did want to show you guys the soul cage. It is super sweet. Got little skulls running lava down from their mouths. It turns on. So you have the steps that lead up. This is another one of those things that I could see myself using it in lots of different scenarios. Anyways, so sorry about the video cutting out, and hopefully I will be able to put another funner video together for you guys soon. Anyway, have fun.